Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time. Let us say a quality time of fun. Uh, yesterday we were, you know, we were live. Uh, we saw some people posting that there is a debate between a person, his name is Daniel and uh, David, which we know, David, most of you. For me, I don't really, I mean, those debate are not debate because as long there's a moderator and there's uh, 10 time for a uh, 10 minute for me, 10 minutes for him, people go prepare for a topic and they get some information from the internet, they put it in the front of them in the computer and they will be reading a paper. So just pause the paper and don't, no, there's no need for a debate. Secondly, a debate should be between two people who they are qualified in the education, which means you cannot debate a rabbit. If you are, let us say, a goat, it have to be between two rabbit or two goat or two human or two smart or two idiots, but someone who do not know his religion, and yet he want to debate about his religion and our belief. That would be very funny. And today we will show you why those Muslims are not qualified to talk about their religion. You see, I did not uh, watch the you know the debate. I just uh, uh, moved for like a little bit in the introduction. Let me see where this guy start talking. And I will show you how right away we will start laughing. I mean, this guy is just a certified idiot and he is a kid. And by the way, I'm not insulting him, but this is who he is. Listen carefully and see what he will say. Where he start talking, let us see. Talk is cheap. Proving what we say is different. I want to let you know, first, welcome. We're glad you're here no matter what walk of life you are from. And also want to let you know we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics here at Modern Day Debate. And with that, thrilled to have you here as well, Dan. Okay, go ahead, my friend. What is this? Go, go. I mean, where is this guy coming from? Modern science debate. What about the women and children? Were they also killed? The soldiers say, no, we didn't kill them. Then a man. Well, hold on. We skipped. Thanks for hosting and thanks to David and thank you to everyone watching. The debate today is about violence and intolerance, Christianity versus Islam. Let me say right off the bat that yes, Islam has violence and Islam is not tolerant of every belief and way of life. And that's a good thing, as I'll explain. But my problem with David Wood and other Christian apologists is that they are inconsistent and dishonest. I'm going to focus on three main examples of this inconsistency. The first is what we can call the Old Testament question. Imagine there was a hadith that described Muslim soldiers coming back from battle and reporting to the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, peace be upon him. The soldiers report that they were victorious in battle and had killed all the enemy men. Then the Prophet وسلم, asked sternly, what about the women and children? Were they also killed? The soldiers say, no, we didn't kill them. Then imagine that the Prophet وسلم, gets enraged at this and condemns the soldiers for not exterminating all the women and children. Now imagine that if a hadith like this existed, David Wood would have no hesitation in citing it over and over again on his channel, making a big... I mean, the debate is over. You are a certified donkey. And I will show you the hadith in two seconds. And then everybody will be laughing at you. You are a certified donkey. So obviously this guy did not know his religion. <laughs> because if you know the your religion, you will not start the debate with this. It's challenging to find such a hadith. You donkey. And by the way, they said to me, why you use the word donkey? Can I find a better word? He started the first two seconds in his argument, challenging, imagine if David Wood can find such a hadith. This is the start, you donkey. 
This is the start of your challenge. Imagine if David Wood can find such a hadith. Should I hang up and go? We are done. Because he is challenging David Wood to find such a hadith. The Christian and the Muslim, they have an argument. And the day before I start, I'm going to say to David Wood. Imagine that David Wood, he hear somebody saying that the Prophet asked his father, Do you kill the women and the children? And they said no. And he said, the Prophet said, What? You did not kill the women and children? Imagine that David Wood, he gets that hadith. You idiot. This is the guy who wanna debate us, challenging us to find the hadith says that the prophet, he encouraged them to kill their children. Yes, he did. He, they were asking him, when we are going to attack the, 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 the enemies, we are killing their women and their children. Is that right? He said, they are from them, which means he encouraged them. He said, don't worry about it. They are from them, so kill them. And we would not even start two seconds of the, 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 the speech. The first two seconds of your speech is a popo. And why we need to go to the hadith? Isn't it the Quran your idiot said that Allah, he sent Moses to learn from a guy, his name is Al-Khadr. <laughs> and this guy, brother, he saw a child who is, he fear, he fear, brother, that he will not be good to his parents. Okay. So he slaughtered him. So why he need to imagine that there is a something in the religion of Islam, it says kill their children. When you are a prophet to claim that this is wisdom, to, to kill a Muslim child, this child is a Muslim child, he's not even a Christian child. And Allah, brother, in the Quran, explain why the Khadr he killed the youth or the boy. Because simply, he his parents were people of faith, so they are Muslims. Okay, but isn't Muhammad, he says, everyone is born as a Muslim. So this person is 100% Muslim. He's born of a Muslim family. His parents are Muslims. Is it your prophet, he says, that the child, he is going to be a Christian or a, he's born as a, as a Muslim by nature, by fitra. And then his parents will make him a Jew or a Christian or a Muslim. Here we go, the parents are Muslim. So even that proved Muhammad to be a fraud because if the parents will make you a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim, the parents are faithful. So how come the child is not? And now the child, he did not do anything yet. He did not become a person who is, have no faith. He's just a plane in the street. So the guy, he took him, he slashed his head, he smashed his head with the wall or in the floor, as it says in the interpretation. Why? Because we feared. We feared. He is not even sure that he would grieve them by abstain on rebellion. Imagine David would he see something the prophet said like this. <laughs> so imagine this guy was debating me and it is not David Wood who is talking to him. It is me. The debate is over. We just showed you from the hadith, and this is authentic, Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari. And now we are showing you from the Quran. We do not even need to continue. And by the way, when I played, I skipped this part. I did not even hear it, so I just heard this one.
because I don't have time really to, you know, so I, I was moving the video to see when this guy, he, you know, like I, I go to the video and I look at, at the, like when his lips start moving in the, like what happened now, you know, when his lips start moving in the video, then I click play. I did not hear this part. I just heard this part. And I cannot believe it that he is so stupid claiming to be a person who have knowledge of his religion. And yet he's a challenge in David Wood to bring such a hadith. Imagine if David Wood, he knew such a hadith. Imagine. We do not need to imagine. We will leave the imagination to your prophet who he imagined that he had sex, but in fact he did not. Who he imagined that he went to seven heaven, but his wife, she said, he did not leave the room. Who he imagined that he is bewitched. But in fact, he is just a crazy person. We don't need to imagine. We will leave the imagination to your prophet who he imagined that your God will make your penis endless. And I'm sure a person like you will be proud, at least in the front of his people, to have such a penis. Because this is the proof that you are following the true God. It is the size of your penis. And I don't know how you're going to use it if it is endless. And your wife is next to you how you will have sex with her you will make a u-turn and what the point of this huge endless size are we going to use it as a pipe line for oil or internet cable so we do not need to imagine abdul we will leave the imagination to a stupid person like you who he claim and the Muslim they think that he is he have something to say but the second you start open your mouth frogs start coming out and I am closing the sink Thanks for hosting and thanks to David and thank you to everyone watching the debate today is about violence and intolerance Christianity versus Islam let me say right off the bat that yes Islam has violence and Islam is not tolerant of every belief and way of life and that's a good thing as I'll explain but my problem with David Wood and other Christian apologists is that they are inconsistent and dishonest. I like it when you say inconsistent. I'm going to play a video for you. Are you ready, Mr. Inconsistent? Oh, hold on, we have a commercial break. The director, he just told me. Commercial break. Hello, babies. If you would like to support Christian Prince, please go to Patreon and show your support www.batreon.com slash christian prince we thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video <laughs> the end of the commercial <laughs> So the Christians are inconsistent, brother. They are inconsistent. Let us examine that. I mean, if I want to make a statement about every every word you say, we will spend the coming century to finish this video. I mean, what's wrong with you? You are just a dump, dump, a dump machine. You walk, you don't walk, you do poo-poo. The poopoo is dripping from you. The Christians, the, my problem with the Christians, uh, apologists, and someone like David Wood and a Christian apologist, that they are inconsistent. Uh, uh, Sheikh, tell us something. They reported that Imam Malik ibn Anas was approached by a man of the people of innovation. So he said, stop, Imam. Stop. Let me debate with you. Let me debate with you. So Imam Malik had some time on his... Uh, uh, Imam Malik, he have time. You know what he is doing for a living. You know he is just masturbating, as the, as Muhammad used to do. And even his friend, they come to the house, sleep in the house, and they masturbate. And then the wife Aisha in the morning, she said to them, "Oh, hold on. If you want, I can teach you how to take it off because this is what I do to the Prophet. I scratch it with my fingers." So Imam Malik have time. He just finished masturbation. Uh, free time. So he said, "Okay, then what?" So the man says, if I beat you in my argument, in debate, uh -huh. you follow me. Mm. And if I don't beat you and you beat me, I follow you. Okay, okay. So Imam Malik says, okay. Okay, okay. So he accepts the terms and the condition. 
In two seconds, he will refuse the term and the conditions. I mean, do you see the stupidity of those who claim to be to, to know Islam? He just said, okay. Well, he just told you, if I win the argument, you leave your religion, you follow me. And you said to him, okay, what he said next, listen and laugh. And laugh. Let's assume I followed you and you beated me. Hmm. Then we both met someone who debated with us and he beated us. Okay. So the man says, that must be a Christian prince. We have to admit, okay. We follow him. He said, my son, the religion of Allah is one. And I see that you keep on hopping from one religion to the other. Uh oh, the one who keep hopping from one religion to other is a stupid. Well, is it this is the case of Muhammad? How many religion Muhammad he changed? 40 years of his life, according to Muslims, he was not a Muslim. Now I know this guy will say, no, he was a Muslim. He was following Abraham. Well, you idiot, the Quran say clearly that your prophet, he was not following anything. He do not know what faith and he do not know what scriptures. You notice that those who claim to have, uh, let us say, they can answer us or can refute us. They don't really use their Quran to prove any point. Because simply they do not know what they are talking about. So when Muhammad, he in the Quran, his God, he says to him, you know nothing about faith. Let us open the verse. And you know nothing about books, about scriptures. Was Allah lying or he was reporting that Muhammad, he is a person who was jumping from a religion to a religion? When I say to a person, you know nothing about faith, which means whatever faith you used to have all your life, it was a fraud. You see, he did not say to him, you know some about faith. He didn't say to him, you have little idea about me. He said, you know nothing. And here you see the Muslim in translation, they try to fix it, but they make it more blind. And thus we have sent to you, between two brackets, Muhammad. By the way, the verse even doesn't say Muhammad. Ruhana, between two bracket inspiration, this is false. Ruhana in Arabic means our spirit. Of our command, which means with our command. And you know not what is the book, nor what is faith. So what happened Muhammad? He changing his faith now? He's hopping from a faith to a faith? How? He saw a guy in the cave, he squeezed him three times and he told him to read. And then he became a believer? No, he did not. He, go, he went to his wife. He told his wife, I saw somebody in the cave. He squeezed me. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. And then the wife, she said, hold on, hold on. What's happening to you? You are almost going to leak and pee in your pant. Let me take you to my cousin, Warqad bin Nufal, who is a Christian priest. The prophet, he'd been taken to Warqad bin Nufal. The wife, she told Muhammad as if he's a kid, tell him. Tell him your story. Tell him. Go ahead. Muhammad told him, there's a guy, he came to me, he squeezed me three times, and he told me, read. And then what he says, oh, this is the Namas. He is the angel of Allah. So the guy who was being squeezed, he did not know what's happening. And the guy who did not get squeezed, he knew what's happening. This is how your religion started, supposedly. Not to forget to mention that your prophet, he has something called the examination of inspiration. If you don't believe me, I can show you where supposedly Khadija, she did, did examine if the one Muhammad he see is an angel or not. And how she did that? She did the strapeze. And as long I don't like to say, say something without showing a reference, let us find it. <clears throat> I know that you do not know Arabic, which is very, make it more even stupid that you pray to your God in a language you do not know. 
This is a Sirin Nabawiya, page number 239, value number one. What it says here? Imtihanu Khadija Burhan al Khadija examining the proof of Muhammad receiving inspiration from Allah. How? Muhammad, he sees someone sitting in the corner. And as usual, Muhammad, nobody see what he see. Because Muhammad, he have an extra vision. I mean, the angel in the corner, but Khadija next to him in the bed, she cannot see the angel, but Muhammad can see him. Look like the angel, he have an equipment who he can blind a person and the other person still can see. In other way, he was invisible for a person, but he is an invisible or yeah, he you know can be seen by the other person. If we translate what is in the front of us, we will see that Khadija she said to the guy or Muhammad, like Allah, oh when you see your friend, which means the angel, come to you, let let me know, let me know, Khabibi, let me know. So Khadija, uh, Muhammad he said, Khadija, I see him, I see him. So she said, okay, if he come to you, tell me. Tell me about it, which means Jibreel. Okay, so he came. This Jibreel, he came. But Muhammad is not sure now he is Jibreel or not, remember. So Khadija, she said to Muhammad, Okay, Khabibi Muhammad, get up, my cousin, and sit in my left thigh. What? Sit where? And what is the name of the chapter? The proof of revelation. What is the proof of revelation in Islam? Is the left thigh of Khadija and the right thigh of Khadija and the ass of Khadija, and I'm not going to mention the third one. So the guy, Muhammad, he go and stand up and he sit on her lap. And she said to him, okay, do you see him? Huh? He said, yes, I still can see him. She said, okay, turn around and sit in the right thigh. Like, is that going to make a difference now? I mean, look at this story, how serious it is. Because there's a difference between sitting, maybe in the right, in the, maybe if he sit in the right thigh, Muhammad will not see him no more. Because location, location, location. I mean, everything is about location in Islam. But what this religion is about? This guy is going to debate us about a prophet? This is your prophet or this is... A... What is this? And then she said, Okay, uh, turn, turn, uh, sit in the right thigh. She said, do you see him? He said, yes, I see him. She said, okay, okay. Now turn and sit in my lap because this is the position of sex. She said to him, do you see him? <laughs> he said, yes. <laughs> and then she started taking off her clothes and she said, do you see him? He said, no. She said, Re rejoice my cousin, for by sure for Allah, by Allah, he is an angel, not the devil. Look at this. So you potato, you are coming to debate us about a prophet who he himself could not even know if what he see is an angel or not and his wife she have to do striptease moving him like a potato, like a puppy in the top of her lap from the right leg to the left leg like a monkey and she keep asking him, do you see him? Yes, I see him. Okay, sit in my lap, do you see him? Yes, I see him. And then when she take off her clothes, she said, do you see him? She take down her veil. This is the translation of Google. Do you see him? Well, the Muslim they say that this is a proof that this person who Muhammad is seeing in the corner is an angel. Why? Because well, she is getting naked, and an angel don't like to see naked women. Well, I say this is my opinion, by the way. I think that the angel he don't want his eye to be hurt. Because obviously she was very ugly. So he ran away. The angel was watching. He was saying, don't, don't, please don't, don't, don't take off your clothes. Don't, no, don't do it. And he went 
to ask the Muslims who they claim to be smart, where Khadija she learned this trick? Like she used to encounter angels every day and she stripped to the previous husbands too. Maybe Khadija she was a striptease lady and she have a lot of expertise with angels. And as long as Khadija she knew that the angel he will not be staying in the room if she take off her clothes. So what the point of sit in my right leg and left leg just strip and finish it? Take off your panty, see him to him, say Muhammad, do you see him? He will say no, tell him this is an angel. When I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. Guys, shall I continue in, in getting this guy busted or we are done? I mean, this is too much, isn't it? Shall we continue? Let me know if you like me to continue or done. Right? Because he is not really worth it. He's just a kid. You know? Actually, what made me upset from David Wood, where, where he got those kids? You know, he collected a bunch of kids from the street. Like, Mimi Hijab is a kid boy. Nobody even listened to him. He was a street corner shouter. Even Muslim don't listen to him. He made him famous. Why you do that? If you want to debate, at least debate somebody he have knowledge in his religion. Don't debate kids. It, it lower, you see, I open my sky for everybody to call me. I, can, I don't consider this as a debate. Yesterday, a kid, he is 14 years old, called me. Can I call it a debate? Ultimate 40 called me. Even Ultimate 40 called me. Can I call it a debate? Go, uh, brother. Tell us more, brother. I'm going to focus on three main examples of this inconsistency. Hmm. The first is what we can call the Old Testament question. Imagine there was a hadith that described Muslim soldiers coming back from battle Imagine. and reporting to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu peace be upon him. Hmm. The soldiers report that they were victorious in battle and had killed all the enemy men. Hmm. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked sternly, what about the women and children? Were they also killed? Imagine. The soldiers say, no, we didn't kill them. Then imagine that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Then imagine, your Prophet did that, you idiot. <laughs> gets enraged at this and condemns the soldiers for not exterminating all the women and children. Hmm. Now imagine that if a hadith like this existed, imagine. David Wood would have no hesitation in citing it over and over again on his channel, making a big deal about it, denouncing Islam for it, and generally characterizing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an evil, bloodthirsty man. Hmm. But the reality is there is no such hadith. In yeah. There is no such a hadith. Christian Prince was showing you a hadith does not exist. And this hadith was in Bukhari and Muslim. But it does not exist. In reality, there is no such a hadith. Hmm. Imagine. Okay, we finished the, the part of imagination now. Continue. Let us see here. <clears throat> Continue your movie. Instead, this is what we read in the Bible about Moses. In Numbers 31, verse 14 to 18 of the Bible, we read, And Moses was angry with the officers of the army. Moses said to them, Have you let all the women live? Now kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known man by lying with him. But all the young girls who have not known man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. Shall we go to the story of Bani Mustaliq and what your prophet he did with them? Shall we go to the story of Safiya and we see what he did with them? And why you don't tell us what is the story about Moses? If you idiot, you idiot. If you go to your Quran, you will see that the story is in the Quran. And Allah, he punished the Jews for not killing everyone there. Not only they did not kill, According to your Quran, they did not even attack. So your God, he enforced a penalty because the Jews refused to kill those who live in a, in a country called supposedly, according to the Quran, 